A quick warning before we start. This game uses a flashing pattern that has been known to cause seizures. Even more so than the usual Famicom game. So if you're sensitive to those things or are around someone who is, skip this video. First things first, let it never be said that I don't give people what they want. Transformers is a game whose awfulness has transcended the platform. If you know your Japanese video game, you might point to Super Monkey Daiboken or Takeshi no Chosenjo as the worst game on the Famicom, but the name Transformers gave this one enough cachet that people who don't know Famicom games are aware of how bad it is. I suspect that most people who've played it outside of Japan had the same experience. Oh boy, a Transformers game! I always wanted one when I was a kid! Oh no. Oh no! Transformers started out as multiple Japanese toy lines, but when Hasbro brought them to the U.S., they kind of mushed them all together into one. Thanks to a syndicated cartoon, they became a massive hit. And that actually wound up getting backported into Japan. The toy company distributing them in Japan was Takata. And as the movie and another season of the cartoon were getting underway, they decided to start making Famicom games. This game is subtitled Convoy no Nazo which in English would be Mystery of Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime's figure was called Convoy in Japan. On the box it says Convoy with an M. That's an error that came from Japanese pronunciation. The game takes place vaguely in the time frame of Transformers the movie, where Optimus Prime has been destroyed and Ultra Magnus is the new leader. If you collect all the letters to spell Rodimus, then he'll turn into Rodimus Prime, though I didn't get that far. I'll be generous and call the game a side-scrolling running gun, but running's a bad idea and gunning doesn't work very well. With the action, enemies tend to move in and fire on you rapidly, sometimes unavoidably. Theoretically, you could memorize where all the enemies are placed. In practice, the wrong enemies sometimes appear, not every time, but often enough where you'll suddenly get attacked by something that wasn't there before. And there's a lot of randomness in the enemy attack patterns, particularly how they shoot at you. So let's say you're shooting back at them. Well, most enemies are positioned so that you'll shoot around them. And a lot of them transform when they're hit, so they keep coming at you. In fact, the best solution on the more flat and open areas is to transform into a truck and just drive past people because they can't reach you. You transform into a truck by pressing and holding down, you transform back into a robot by pressing and holding up. The big downside of the truck is you can't jump. Instead, the jump button is replaced by forward-firing missiles that go over people's heads. At least in truck mode you can shoot straight up. If you see a jet that's flying straight ahead, Hitting that one will drop an item. The peas give you a spread shot, and that's really useful considering how tough it is to hit anything. The F gives you the ability to fly. Not that I can demonstrate it, because the one time it showed up in my playthrough, it turned on when I picked it up, and I hit the button to activate it, which dropped me straight into a hole. The B gives you a barrier that absorbs a few hits. The music changes when you pick it up, so initially it comes across like you're invincible, but it is a fixed number of hits. That B will be your best friend because it might be the only way that you can get through a stage. The symbol with nothing in it just gives you some points. Collecting the D removes your shot and flight power-ups. Finally, there's the 1 which gives you an extra life and 1,000 points. Getting 10,000 points also gives you an extra life. And if you get the 1, and that puts you over 10,000 points, you only get one life because this is a terrible game. 
If you manage to survive an entire stage of one-hit kills from cheap enemies whose bullets sometimes are the exact same color as the background, then you get to fight a boss. All of the boxes are a static picture with one glowing weak point that you shoot three times. Initially, there's some solid platforms, but later on it's just three moving platforms that you jump between. They are actually much, much easier than the rest of the game. Transformers Convoy no Nazo always has a new surprise for you. Whoops, you can't jump through platforms so you can't dodge the bullets. Whoops, you shot the guy in the wrong place so you can't pick up the item. Whoops, the power-up guy was placed at exactly jump height so you'd run into him when you go over a hole. It's kind of cruel that truck mode has better weapons, but you can't actually use it in most of the stages. At least you can continue, if you use a cheat code. You have to hold down A, B, and start on the game over screen before the music ends. The furthest I've ever gotten without continuing is stage 3, and that's because I'm a masochist. There's actually 10 unique stages in all, but you have to play them twice to see the ending. The strangest thing to me is that this game actually got a remake. Kind of. It was used as the basis for a mobile phone endless runner that was a crossover between Transformers and Q, a line of miniature cars. It's long since been pulled from app stores, though. It's said that nobody sets out to make a bad game. Transformers Convoy no Nazo really puts that to the test. This feels like a malicious game. If you wanted to create a game to hurt somebody, this is what you would come up with. 